Is there any, you know, you really are, you're the quintessential bad guy in the film. Do you think that all of us in some way have a secret little attraction to be that oh, yeah. evil? Oh, we'd all love to be sadists and bullies. I was always bullied. Yeah. And I've never been the bully. I'm a terrible coward. I'm scared of people. I'm scared of horses. I'm scared of spiders. So, you know, the, ch <laughs> the chance to have this army and every time I twitch an eyebrow to have a whole village full of people quiver, to have one of the biggest butcher superstars in the world be terrified when I ride into his house. It's, it's very cheap therapy for me. <laughs> it's kind of okay. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, that there were, I was reading these things called Revolutionary War reenactors. Reenactors. God okay, love what, them. First of all, what are they? <laughs> They're these people whose hobby it is, God love them, to, uh, <laughs> to reenact wars and, and who would rather be living in the 18th century, uh, century if they had their choice. Pardon me slurring. I went to a premiere until 6 o'clock this morning. So. Oh, and, um, <laughs> They came from all over the country, and they, we're talking about doctors and lawyers and accountants and all kinds of professional men and women who gave up their jobs for three months. I don't know what their clients thought. And they pitched tent, and they stayed for the whole movie. It turned out to be five months in the end, and they became the armies that we needed. And I had a bunch of people who were my green dragoons, who were the finest mounted cavalry in the world, and they would only call me sir and colonel. They wouldn't call me Jason. I begged them to, uh, till the end of the shoot. And... Oh you know, they were a walking, talking, living encyclopedia of the 18th century. Wow. They're did, fantastic. Did you learn a couple of extra things that you didn't know prior yeah, I, to? Yeah, well, I need nothing, that's why. Yeah. They don't teach it in English schools. Yeah, yeah. I why guess, would they? I guess they actually <laughs> wouldn't, now would they? <laughs> I thought we won. You know, I got the whole thing wrong. Um, so, yeah, they taught me everything that I ended up knowing. Hmm. And, and for, those, for, for everyone who actually hasn't seen the movie, why don't you sort of set up, set up your character a bit? Well... You know, I, he's the hero, as far as I'm concerned. He's the big hero of the film uh, from the British point of view. Yes. But from most of the people who buy tickets' point of view, I'm the guy that rides into Mel's life. Mel is resisting joining in the war. He's, mm -hmm. he's put aside all his weapons. He's evol involved in the French-Indian Wars before the movie begins. And he's got seven children. His wife's dead. And he really does not want to get involved in this revolution that's brewing. Uh, but he can't avoid it when I ride, uh, ride up to his house and do something really, really mean. Um, I'd like to tell you what it is, but I'd probably never work again. And, um, and from that point on, it's, it's, you know, in a nutshell, Mel and the Americans versus me and the British. Yes. And we win. I spoiled the ending. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> well, now, this whole, there's a, there's a lot of controversy about the use of the children in the movie. And just, I, I guess, by way of background, without giving anything away, there is one scene in which um, the, Mel calls his two youngest sons yeah. to participate in a in a battle with yeah. him he gives them guns and mm -hmm. uh they have to rescue another one of his children and they end up shooting a lot of british officers mm -hmm. and soldiers um it's kind of weird that there's a controversy about it because we were shooting in carolina and these families came up to me you know three or four generations of family with little kids holding guns you want to come hunting with us like we're talking about kids with a rifle for being there. I remember this family coming up saying, "Ask me, you want to come hunting?" And I said, "No, I, thanks very much. It's really not my cup of tea." You know, and I don't think I could kill a deer. And they said, oh, "We're not talking deer. We're talking dove hunting." I said, "Doves? Don't you mean like little birds of peace?" You know, I, said, I said, "I really don't think I could shoot a dove." He said, "Well, you can't miss. We've got thousands of them. We breed them." I said, "No, that's not what I meant." But um, well, you so can't it's weird. Miss. Because there are, you know, kids today have guns all over the place, certainly where we were shooting, but in the movie you see these kids who are forced into doing something that they really don't want to do and they're heavily traumatized by it. Yeah. And you see Mel's response to it also. It's not just an action sequence, there's a whole mm -hmm. aftermath and Mel is horrified as a father at what he might have dragged his children into. And the point of the movie is to show what happens when war comes home, when right. war comes to your backyard. And, um, you know, it's easy for us today. When we see wars, there are always these high-tech wars far away, these kind of video wars. But, you know, these video wars happening far away, they're happening in somebody's yard. You know, it's always somebody's home that's getting destroyed, somebody's family. And uh, this is what happened the last time war came home for the Americans. Yeah.